Mr. Corsi here. So this is the racetrack game. Let's see what's required. We play it on a grid of dots, uh, graph paper suitable, coloured pencils, one for each player, and definitely a ruler to stop argument. Now underneath this video you'll find links to templates that I've made. So the number of players, usually two or three, four, possible. Five is probably too much. It gets a bit crowded. So let's say two to four players. Now, some terms that we use for the game. The game's played on a grid. You can see that on the right, where a racetrack is drawn in the grid. If it's a graph paper, it's at the intersections of the lines. Now, a vector move in the game is represented by a line segment going from one dot to another. That's how your race racing car will move. And two vector moves are considered equal if they have the same distance and same direction. There's examples of equal vector moves in the right. And finally a dot would represent a move of no distance. And that's essentially how the game begins. You've had a move of no distance and that's the setup. So let's get to the essentials of play. So each player is represented by a different colour and they start off with a dot on the starting line. You agree an order of play, top to bottom, and that's where your race car starts. And you take turns now according to the car move rule. And you're considered to have started with a move of zero length. So let's now get to the heart of this game. Let's examine the car move rule. How is it that you move your car? Well, suppose it's Red's move. And suppose previously Red had moved three squares to the right and one square up. Now the next move, Red makes the same vector move. That's three squares to the right, one square up. However, Red has the option of altering that so that it ends on one of the surrounding eight squares. So, three squares along one square up is a perfectly valid move. Another valid move would be two squares to the right, two squares up. Another possibility, four squares to the right, one square up. Two squares to the right, no squares up. Let's have another example. Suppose green, the previous turn, was four squares down and the next turn they can do exactly the same or have the option of altering it to end in one of these eight squares, provided they're free. So three squares down, no squares to the right or left. Five squares down, one square to the right, which is an OK move and four squares down, one square to the left. These are all valid moves. Now in particular, this is important at the start of the game, if you've gone no squares to the right or left in the previous move, you can move to any of the surrounding eight squares, one square to the right, no squares up or down. That's a possibility. Or one square down, no squares left or right. But if there was a car on that spot that would not be allowed. You'd only have seven possibilities. So it's time to look at an illustrative game to see these rules in action. So red followed by green followed by blue. Here's red's possibilities. The three points at the top are off the racetrack. Red's entitled to crash the car but that would be a bit daft. The other two on the left are going the wrong way. It's usually agreed to go anti-clockwise round the racetrack. So two points on the right are valid. And red chooses to go one square to the right. Now green next. There's all the possibilities. Note that green could go directly up because that's where red was and red is not now there. But green cannot go one square up and one square to the right because that's where red's car is. So green chooses to go one square to the right. And then blue possibilities for blue and blue also one square to the right back to red and red starts to accelerate as will green presumably and green is followed by blue doing precisely the same 
Now, red continues to accelerate, but Ben Cumming goes one square up. Green doesn't quite follow suit. Green's a slightly more cautious, as is blue. So let's see what red's going to do. Well, this is, I would suggest, slightly reckless, going far too fast into the bend. Green's being a bit more cautious. And blue looks like they're even more cautious. So I think red is about to crash and it's now time to have a look at the crash rule. So here is the crash rule. Let's read through it. If a player's line segment for their move crosses or touches the racetrack border, then this is the point where their car crashed and the car is immediately placed on the nearest free dot to the crash point that's a dot on the racetrack and their turn is registered as a vector move of zero length. So if we look over to the right Red's next move, the same as the previous one looks like this and all the choices for amending that rule are all off the racetrack so red decides to make that move and there in purple is the crash site and the nearest point back on the racetrack, the nearest point is there where the dot is. And for red's next turn, we just assume that red had a zero move in the previous turn. So let's look at, th at the game as it progresses round the track. So that's the race completed. I think we'd agree blue was the winner. However, there is a small point to consider when winning. It's important then when the first car goes over the winning line, every player must have the same number of turns. So it may be the case, suppose red had crossed first, then uh, green and blue would have still had to have a chance and at that point it's the one that's furthest over the line that wins. So that's the racetrack game and this is Mr Corsi signing out. Hope you enjoyed the video.